Selling your home can stir up a range of emotions that you may not have expected. And while you feel excited about the opportunity to move into a new house, you may also experience feelings of sadness or loss as you prepare to sell your home. In this particular episode, I'm going to be sharing with you six tips to help you overcome the wide range of emotions you may experience when you are selling your home. Let's dive in. Welcome to Work It, Live It, Own It, a show that explores how to upgrade your lifestyle through life lessons, real estate, and entrepreneurship. Here's your hostess, Sakola Lair. So step one, confirm that you're ready. So whether you're downsizing your space after retiring or you're upsizing to accommodate a growing family, You need to make sure you're ready for the home selling process. Remind yourself why you're selling your home in the first place. You can even create a list of reasons to serve as motivation and reassurance. And if you're having trouble preparing your home to sell, remember, it's the people and not the place that makes the memories so special. So it's crucial that you only begin the listing process once you're ready. Otherwise, you may be looking for reasons not to accept potential offers. Step two, start staging early. It's never too early to start staging your home. And listen, the longer you've lived in your home, you've created countless memories. And these experiences can come rushing back as you begin to declutter and make changes to it. So one of the first steps of the staging process is depersonalizing your home. Listen, when I go on listing appointments, it's one of those hard conversations, but I have to tell sellers, hey, I need you to remove personal photographs, even memorabilia. So buyers can imagine themselves living in their home, in their future home. And you may also need to change some of the personalized features that you love, you know, like that favorite paint color on the walls. So painting the walls a neutral color is also advisable. Not seeing the smiling faces of loved ones throughout your home or the appearance of a room you've grown accustomed to may take some time to get used to. However, you may feel a a bit of relief by detaching yourself from the house. So by starting the staging process early, you're giving yourself time to work through any of the emotions that you'll experience. And this can also be very important when you're selling a home of a loved one who's passed away. So give yourself that time. Step three, I want you to concentrate on the future. An excellent way to overcome any feelings you may experience when selling your home is to focus on the future instead of the past. If you're going to go house hunting, get excited about the homes you get to consider. You also have already bought a new home. So if you've in in this situation, if you've already bought a new home, you can also start working and focusing on planning projects that you like to tackle or how you like to decorate your new space. So again, keep your mind's eye focused on the future. Step four, this is key. This is so important, guys. Set a realistic sales price. Now, while the memories you've made in your home are priceless, home buyers are looking to pay strictly for the property. They're not trying to pay for that tankless water heater that you've installed. There can be a significant difference between your sentimental value and the fair market value. So avoid insisting on steep prices for your home and work with your realtor to decide on a reasonable price based on the current market, not your emotions or your feelings. Next step, Leave for showings and open houses. Now, listen, if you're already working with the realtor, 
They should have already advised you on this, that you should not be there for showings or open houses. You should not be video recording people when they're touring your home. Okay. In some agreements, I know in the state of North Carolina, there is part in the agreement that says that you should not be recording people without their knowledge. So make plans to leave your home during showings and avoid making buyers feel uneasy or pressured. However, sticking around in an emotional state could even be worse. So potential home buyers may feel less than flattering comments or they may leave less than flattering comments about the aspect of your home. And it can be hard to hear. While it isn't a personal insult, it can feel that way. And these comments can be helpful as any feedback your agent receives can help you address areas of your home that may need to be updated. Plan to go on a drive, visit friends or family. Matter of fact, if you're doing open houses on the weekend, book yourself into a hotel. Hold a family bonding activity while potential buyers are in your home. So you're taking the focus off on people being inside your home. Next step, don't take negotiations personally. Once you have found an interested buyer, they may come back with repairs or concerns they want you to address before closing. There's no reason to take offense, guys. As this is the part of the negotiation process, remain calm and work with your agent to find a middle ground where you and the buyer are happy. The focus is on having a stress-less transaction. That's what I iterate to my buyer and seller clients. Remember that your goal is to sell your home and most home sales have negotiations. Now listen, selling a home is an emotional experience, but by remembering One chapter ending is the beginning of another. And you can remain excited and hopeful about what lies ahead. So I hope that these six steps have been beneficial for you. I hope that this helps you to get over the feelings of loss of a home that was loved and cherished by a loved one or one that you've made wonderful memories in. But again, just to reiterate these six steps, confirm that you're ready. Start your staging process early. Concentrate on the future. Set a realistic sales price. Leave for showings and open houses. And during this process, this is for buyers as well. When I take buyers in on homes, as a buyer's note, guys, leave your personal comments for when you step outside the home, okay? Or when you're off site. Don't make comments inside the home. Don't talk about your financing inside the home because if for whatever reason there is a device that does record voices, you wanna make sure that you're not giving any personal information out while you're touring a home. And the last step is don't take negotiations personally. All right, This wraps it up for this episode of Work It, Live It, Own It. I hope that you guys take into consideration of how to kind of eliminate the emotional aspect of selling a home. If you are going to get excited, you are going to get emotional, get emotional about your future, not your past. All right, guys, take care. And don't forget to work it, live it, own it in your everyday life.